YouTube Oz it going the goat house is back and the Brandon Ayuk trade rumor starting to heat up a little bit more people talking about it a ton lately we're going to talk about all the landing spots being mentioned we're actually going to rule out some landing spots that people are talking about and it's going to be kind of in order so the teams towards the end of this video are the more likely landing spots we're going to talk about how they could land them maybe, maybe why they wouldn't they won't uh, so a lot to go over really excited about it Starting with the Buffalo Bills, I don't. This one's not going to happen, in my opinion, and I think a lot of you watching this video probably understand that. They, you probably, uh, you probably are getting that as well. You agree, but I think some people will mention the Buffalo Bills maybe a little bit less as the offseason goes on. But some people will mention them because they traded Stephon Diggs. They need a, a big time number one receiver. You could argue, um, you know, it'd be a really appealing landing spot. For Brandon Ayuk going to Josh Allen and the Bills, it would make them that much more of a contender. So I can see why people mention them, but financials is a big thing here. You have to extend Brandon Ayuk when you get him, pretty much. You have to kind of get an agreement on an extension. I would imagine if he's traded, the extension happens very, very soon after or right away um, because he's going to want that. And they are a little limited. They're very limited in the future. So can they make it happen? I'm sure some money could be moved around for any team. But do they want to put themselves in a hole? Do they? Can they give Ayuk what he wants? So a lot of obstacles there. And I do feel like that they feel like they are set with their current receiver group. They have a plan at this point. They added some versatile pieces uh, like a Curtis Samuel, they have Khalil Shakur who broke out last year. They draft Keon Coleman. And then Dalton Kincaid is more than just a tight end. He's really just an overall weapon in the passing game. So um, I kind of see what their plan is. I'm excited about it. So they feel that they may be set. So I, I think this shouldn't be really a surprise that I'm putting them on this video because people have mentioned them, but kind of ruling them out at the same time. Uh, some unlikely candidates or unlikely landing spots, starting with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I mean, to me, a, ba uh, a massive need, a big need, and I think people agree uh, with that. It would make them that much more of a contender. Like Zay Flowers needs some more help over there. I know they got some other guys that could potentially step up, but really they need more help at the receiver position for Lamar Jackson. Um, so this would be awesome. It's definitely something they should probably look into, but they are very limited in cap space right now. Actually, the league's least amount of cap space in $6 million, and they're pretty limited in the future because they've paid some big-time players um, throughout their roster, but Lamar is the one that stands out. Uh, so that kind of put them in a little bit of a limited situation in terms of uh, – uh, cap space in the future they also haven't valued receiver to this this uh degree yet you know they could uh, again this is only the second year with offense coordinator Todd Munkin I, I feel like he's going to continue to value receiver a little bit more than maybe a Greg Roman Baltimore Ravens offense did but uh, there's nothing that they have shown us that in that organization that front office that is like yes this is a Ravens move they do make some splash trades but not really at the receiver position but that's got to change at some point it could right now uh, financially kind of going back to that they could find a way to make it work and kind of backload the contract but um, they kind of put themselves in a hole a little bit I, I just don't see them making this move but they are considered a landing spot for a reason because they are a contender they have a need there they're not afraid to make splash moves so uh they are they are a landing spot but to me an unlikely landing spot at, at, at this given time another team in kind of that you know they're a landing spot but an unlikely landing spot tier at this moment is the new york giants I, you know, I do I do keep going back to Buffalo for their GM, Joe Shane, where he was part of that organization when they made that splash trade for Diggs, and right around that time, they took a big leap up. They got that major weapon for Josh Allen, and that was huge. So I'm kind of waiting for him to kind of make that move. Maybe he already did by drafting Malik Neighbors, but Ayuk and Neighbors having that one-two punch, that duo, uh, you know, would, would, be, would be electrifying, you know, would be massive for them. Uh, and that could really elevate their team, and they, they'd be a pretty damn good roster. Just some questions at quarterback, uh, you know. But they uh, they could I could see them thinking they're set. You know, they have been they've kind of been settling with a, b a below average receiver group for for a few years now with this new uh, leadership, somewhat new leadership at this this point. So they you know do they valued enough? Do they, you know, do they feel that they're set? Because they, I mean, now they had neighbors as the big time guy, and they have some other guys that can play. They have high hopes for Wandale Robinson. You know, they got Slayton in there still. They got a couple. They got a few guys in there, obviously, that can play. 
Um, so they may feel that they're set. Uh, and the biggest thing I think and why it makes them an unlikely landing spot. Well, yeah, they feel they, they had a neighbors. They feel like they're set. Uh, but, uh, I, I don't know. Ayuk is, you know, is the, I feel like the Niners got to be appealing enough for him, but it almost feels like he wants out, you know, because they do run the football a lot, but I think it's more so because the contract, but he's got to, you know, most of the time players do not have a say where they get traded. These days you see a little more of that, but he needs an extension where he goes, you know, so a team's not going to trade for him if he doesn't want to play for them, you know, doesn't want to sign an extension for him. So he really does have a say here in this, uh, this uh, instance. So, uh, I don't think the Giants may maybe they won't be appealing enough for him. I know Neighbors is there. Dayball is a pretty good coach, um, but the quarterback situation just may not be super super appealing. So that could stop it from happening. That's kind of why the main reason they're in the unlikely category here. Uh, and they did already make that big shocking you know splash trade for Burns. So do they put that much value into this off season? Um, that's kind of a small thing there, but sometimes teams don't. A team like that, that's like a not really a major, major contender, won't make a you know that many splash moves. Uh, put all their chips in right now. So Giants have been mentioned. I understand it. I kind of put them in the tier of unlikely, but a landing spot still. Kind of you know same tier as the Ravens. Another team, the Panthers, and the Panthers get mentioned a ton, and they're. They're a little more likely than those other unlikely teams we talked about, I'd say, but I'm still going to put them in that unlikely territory. But again, still, they're on this video for a reason. They are somewhat of a landing spot. They definitely could use another receiver. They need a guy that uh, you know could be a part of a long-term plan because there's no set thing with Deontay Johnson, expiring deal. I'd imagine they extend him, but that's all assumption or prediction right now. Adam Thielen not going to be a long, around for much longer, obviously, so... Right now, in terms of long-term plan, Xavier Leggett, that's pretty much it. And receiver is very important for Bryce Young, very important for Dave Canales. So uh, I, 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 they, need, they need one, even though it may not look like it on paper right now. Um, I guess it dep depends on what they're going to do with Deontay Johnson, and they probably have an idea. And they do have a decent amount of future cap space, really start in 2026 and on. There's quite a bit available there. Uh, maybe, you know, you know, now getting into the reasons why I maybe put them in that unlikely category. They are a little limited right now. One of the, one of the lowest, uh, actually second least uh, at six million. Uh, you know, that's not a huge thing because you can backload the contract. Uh, somewhat limited in, in year two, which would be next year. That's not the biggest thing uh, on why they're on on the unlikely uh, category here. They've added multiple options to the receiver group. Uh, you know, I, I you look at the starters; they're going to feel like they're set right now. So if they add Ayuk, somebody's getting less playing time. Um, you know, and they already said they view Johnson as more of an outside guy, Leggett more of a gadget and outside guy, and then Thielen's in the slot. Ayuk is is better outside; he can do a bit of everything, but he's better outside. I, I just don't really see. I mean, anybody that I adds Ayuk, there's a role for him, but I don't know if they view like they they don't really view themselves as, as a team that needs somebody in that role right now. I feel like they're they're gonna play it by year. They're not gonna gamble big time in the future right now. Um, and they're going to feel like they're set going like today. So I, I kind of bumped them down to that unlikely uh, tier for trading for Brandon Ayuk, even though they've been thrown out there a bit. Maybe it's maybe it's a little bit more so by fans, but yeah, we'll see. You never know. Uh, into the onto the wild card landing spots. Lions have been mentioned a little bit recently. I think it's more like hype, like that. You know, want that would be awesome. Uh, they they could use another starting receiver. Like this team's pretty. It's a good roster. Like, it's pretty complete. They could definitely use another consistent big-time receiver to take them to that next level. That, that next level. I think if they added Brandon Ayuk with him on with St. Brown with that team, that roster, like, they're already contender, but, like, that – like, is this the team to beat? Like, is that – like, that is that the team? Like, it would give them that much of a contender-type boost for an already a team that's already a contender. They do have the cap space, too. They have, they have plenty of space. They can make it work. So, um, it's like that one piece away that it's a contender with cap space. I mean, rare you take it, maybe you take advantage of that. Um, we've seen like legit and like the chiefs have done that in the past. So all that makes you want to go like, it's a legit contender, but 
I, you know, I think the 49ers, there's a chance they would uh, they would refuse to trade him to Detroit. I mean, they just played him in the NFC Championship game. It's a legit other contender. They may just rather dish out a few more, few more, uh, a little bit more money, I suppose, in the contract to Ayuk, then trade him to Detroit. Like I can definitely see that. Like I, my money would actually be on that, unless you know they have no choice and. He won't sign even if they throw in a little bit more money and the Lions are the only team offering, but I just don't see that being the case. Uh, and the Lions may think they're set because they do have a really good roster. They have a plan for their guys. They always have a plan. And they're a team that kind of sometimes, like, they'll, they, hey, we can get a guy for this spot, but we got some good guys. We, we, we love the guys that we draft. We, we love developing them and they've done such a good job and we've done such a good job developing that we might just stick with, with our guns and what we got. So they're kind of... Not always, but sometimes one of those teams. So that could be a reason as well. They might not just be. They may not be interested at all because of that. But I, yeah, that's why they are a bit of a wild card. I almost put them. On, it makes so much sense. So like this, they're a team that I think they're kind of kicking in the gear. Where hey, we're not like a, a developing upside team anymore. Going into this, you know, these future years, we are. We are a legit contender, so maybe they flip a switch and they go for it. Makes a lot of sense, but some some obstacles. The Niners have to want to do it, you know, because this is a threat of an NFC team, um, and the Lions are going to have to want to do it as well. But a wild card landing spot there to the Detroit Lions. I see them being mentioned a little bit lately. I put the Jaguars in here, and I think people will maybe, yeah, you could put them unlikely. Uh, because they've added receivers, we talked about it. You know, we talk about it on the slide that they, it's on your screen that they have added multiple options, and um, you know they they've added Brian Thomas Jr. first round pick from LSU. They added Gabe Davis. Uh, you know they already have Christian Kirk, who's a hell of a slot receiver, a big playability guy. Uh, you know, so you could say unlikely. They don't really do they need them? Do they think they need them? Uh, I'd say to me, I don't know why, but the, to me the Jaguars are a team that like wouldn't be afraid to do this. Like they wouldn't be afraid to go all out and get better and they wouldn't be afraid you know a lot of teams you know they draft a guy like brian thomas jr in the first round they they may go like we got to play that guy right I, for some reason the jags i think if they ha- they're able to get their hands on iuke for the right price and be able to extend him i think they wouldn't be afraid to have davis or brian thomas jr like you know probably the rookie brian thomas but uh, kind of be more of a rotation guy in year one um you know, and then slowly take over for Gabe Davis, we'll say. So I, I could see them just not being afraid to go there, like to do that. But And they have, they have shown strong interest in adding a legit receiver. They may have called about Ayuk. They tried to get Calvin Ridley once they lost him. They were kind of sniffing around a little bit. They were trying to trade way up from league neighbors in the draft. Um, and then they end up trading back and getting Brian Thomas Jr. So there is a pretty big difference there, like on their views on the, those types of receivers. Like they still may think that they need a legit receiver. So it's kind of a sneaky team where people kind of at one point were like, yeah, that's a legit team for Brandon Ayuk. But now because they've added so many, you know, since they've drafted Brian Thomas on top of signing Gabe Davis, you know, people probably moving them down the list. I'd say maybe not so fast. That's not my top prediction, obviously, but they're they're a little sneaky. Uh, they can afford him, so that's kind of the, why it could happen. But they did just give Trevor Lawrence the bag um, and Josh Allen, so tied up some money long term. Long term future, they could be a little limited, and that could kind of stop them. That's probably the big thing. I'd say it's more so that. Uh, than because they drafted Brian Thomas Jr. Like, it w- would stop them. I- I'd say it's more so just because they gave out a ton of money. But you got to pay money to these big-time players to win championships. I-, I don't I don't think they're a team that's like an organization that's like afraid to do that right now where they're at. Um, so we will see. They could be a little sneaky. Uh, another wild-card landing spot, team that's really not being talked about is the Saints. And I there- there's a one reason why they're not being talked me- mentioned. And... Uh, and I do view them as a wild card landing spot still, not a top landing spot. But because cap space, you know, the financials, it matters. It definitely matters. Uh, you know, can you afford him? You got to give him extension. You know, he's going to be a high paid player. And they are limited now, and they are extremely limited in, in, in the future. And so people will go, well, that stuff matters. So that's not a landing spot. But I think what people don't realize sometimes is that it, well, that it matters for 31 teams. If a team's in a financial hole, if any of those 31 teams, give or take a couple maybe, are in a hole, they won't make this move. They just won't. And then people realize that. But the 32nd team is New Orleans Saints. They will be in a hole, and they do not give a shit. They, they'll put themselves even more of a hole, and they're not afraid this organization, looking at the past, 
uh, you know, the front office, they're not afraid of making that splash move. They're not afraid to go out and get better. They, they're they always about uh, all, all about getting better right now, and they're living in the now, you know. So that's why they should be up here. Uh, and they do have a little bit of spending money this season. They're a little limited, but future is is a Saints, you know, future, like what, what it always looks like there in terms of the financials. But definitely could use another receiver uh, to pair with Olave. I know Shahid's pretty solid, but is that a consistent every down receiver? Um, but you know he may be a little underrated of a player. But they definitely could use another one. They want Derek Carr to work out. They want this. Uh, they want to have a more explosive offense. Obviously, um, we talked about them not being afraid to make the moves. It doesn't. You know the financials don't stop them. But uh, will it appeal enough for you? It's a little more of a question. There's some teams where we go like, yeah, it's just not going to appeal enough. And there's some teams like, yeah, it'll appeal to Brandon. I, this one's a little bit of a question. I guess it'll. It, you know his thoughts. It'll be his thoughts on Derek Carr. You know, but playing a lot with Olave could be pretty appealing. It could be pretty appealing, obviously. So you never know with that one. Uh, but they, and we talked about it. I don't think it's going to phase them, but they are very limited on future cap space. So maybe it's something they uh, they shouldn't really do, even though they, they could, they, they find a way, even though it kills their future always. But, you know, so that's a, another wild card team that maybe could be a little sneaky. Uh, another wild card one being mentioned a bit, and it, it looks like a legit top option at first. You know, right? They need another receiver. Uh, really good spot for Iuke. You know, Kyler, good quarterback there. I mean, there'd be a lot of fun in that offense. And Marvin Harrison Jr., like a good two-headed monster at receiver. I mean, legit. It, it, this addition would give them a major boost. Like, we could be talking about them as a playoff team, a sneaky, sneaky, explosive team uh, because, like, for, because of an addition like this. Like, it could make them that dynamic. Um, you know, so it'll be a lot of fun, plenty of cap space or loads of it right now in the future. Um, so all that makes them a legit top landing spot could argue. Number one, there's a big, but like, but, or if the 49ers are, a, are in the same division as the NFC West are in the same division as the Cardinals. They very well may not want to trade him to a division rival. And you see teams doing that a little bit more and more recently, but this would be a big one. You don't really see this often at all. Uh, I guess you can argue like a Hawkinson from the Lions or the Vikings, but um, I, that's the thing. Like, that's that's the thing. Like, everything makes so much sense, but I just the not. It's kind of like the Lions situation with the Lions because of their more they're more of a threat. But the the Cardinals, I mean, they play them uh, twice a year. They're in the same division every year, and who knows? Like, the, this can again we talked about it, it can make them really good, so it can make them a threat. So I, I just really they, they're gonna stay. I know people are talking about them. A little bit more as a legit landing spot. I'm gonna keep them in the wild card range. That's a big like that. Almost makes it. You could argue that they're just it's just not gonna happen because the division thing, you know. So that that's the thing there. So tough tough break for the Cardinals because I feel like they would want him, or maybe I, I you know you would hope, uh, but yeah, never know. Uh, legit landing spot. Now we're going to get into the legit landing spots. The Patriots have been mentioned a ton. They, ha they have shown interest in trading for a San Francisco wide receiver this offseason. I've, you know, whether it's Debo or Ayuk or both, or, you know, we know they've, they've kind of called a little bit. They've shown a little, we don't know like how crazy that interest was, but we've know it. We've heard that it happens. So, um, I think that alone kind of makes them a legit landing spot. Like, how could you not put a team like that up here when they've, they've called about, I feel like specifically Ayuk, but um, maybe they're more interested in Debo. You know, we don't know 100% for sure, but they have a need at receiver, mainly a receiver one. Like, they needed a big-time option for Drake May. They have, like, multiple options. Like, they have underrated options, young upside options, but they don't have that number one. They have plenty of cap space now in the future. Uh, but, they, you know, why it may not happen, and the reason I almost put them in the wild card section is because they have added several options at receiver. And then, you know, they were talking about trading for one of these guys, but then since then they've added two in the draft. And, you know, so they have a number of options. Uh, and it could be a sneaky receiver group. Uh, and will they be appealing enough to IU? Kind of a question mark. I think Drake may make some appealing, but uh, they might be. You got to put them in a the legit category because they've specifically called about IU. Yeah, and they've drafted uh, Polk and uh, Baker since. Some pretty good options there. Uh, they've. they've uh, Added Osborne, you know, you think Juju could step up. Demario Douglas uh, was pretty solid last year. They have Kendrick Bourne, so they actually have options. So looking at it that way, it's maybe maybe 
not as legit as the other ones we're about to talk about. But, uh, yeah, again, I said it multiple times. They have shown interest, so it's a team to watch. Uh, it's about the Raiders. They've been linked to each other, Vegas to Ayuk, Ayuk to Vegas, uh, this offseason, mainly because of a social media post earlier in the offseason. They do need a long-term option at receiver. You could say they might be set. They have Adams, Myers, but they don't really have a firm long-term option. IU could be that guy. They can't afford him. They have they have a bit of cap space. Obviously, a solid situation. I'd say maybe an appealing spot because Pierce, the Arizona State ties there, and Devonte Adams is probably. A, I feel like it's a guy other receivers want to play with. Um, you know, and it seems like a fun environment, a fun team, a team maybe for the future. So it could be appealing because of that. Uh, but it may not be appealing because the quarterback situation whether it's O'Connell, Minshew, whatever. Uh, and they're a team that, like, their 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 quarterback situation isn't solved. Like, it's a team, like, they try to trade up for Jaden Daniels. We know that. Uh, they're a team that they, they they are going to make a splash move at quarterback in sometime in the near future. Very well could be next offseason, whether it's uh, drafting a guy, trading up to draft a guy, or or, uh, or signing, you know, maybe a da- could be a Dak Prescott, uh, for an example. Um, you know, free agency, like it could be a landing spot uh, for him. So um, a team, and that could make it happen. Like, Hey, we got a plan, Brandon. Hey, we're going to trade for you. And then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to make that last addition. Cause if they got a quarterback, it's a legit team. It feels like a playoff team. Uh, but when you have like that upcoming move, it is tough for those teams to make this splash type of trade because you don't want to trade away a lot. You want to make sure because, you know, maybe they tried to trade up for Jaden Daniels. Like, if that was this upcoming draft, like, maybe you wouldn't have the ammo. And they didn't even they didn't even have the ammo. Like, didn't even offer enough then or a team didn't want to do it probably because they wanted, you know, the commanders wanted to draft Jaden Daniels. But you want to keep that ammo because you don't really – it's really hard to predict the future. What, where are you going to pick in the draft? Where you need to trade up to? What you need to offer? Um, how much you need to spend if you're if you're paying for a quarterback and free agency? It's it's impossible to fully predict those things. So if you put yourself in a little bit of a hole and then kind of cost yourself, because that, that's the most obviously I don't have to say it, but I'm going to say it's the most important position in football. So you want to make sure you have options, you have uh, the ability to to make that move. So that is first and foremost on their on their minds, I suppose, in that organization. So that could stop them. But it does feel like a legit landing spot. He's been linked there. I it feels like. Even though the quarterback situation it feels like an appealing landing spot for for Ayuk, I feel like he would want to play there just based on what we've gathered this off season. I'd say I'd say the Chargers are a top three landing spot right now. The number number I put them number three. I think there's a clear top two. There are there is a there's a clear top two at the top. We'll talk about them. Uh, but a massive need at receiver for the Chargers. Herbert needs a legit top option. Like he's got guys that can play. McConkey should be able to play. Josh Palmer can play. Maybe Johnson steps up. Um, you know, there's some options there, but come on, they Herbert does not have that legit top option that every elite or great quarterback should have, and this would be that guy. Like he would be super productive with Justin Herbert. I think it's a really good situation for for Ayuk. I mean, we talked about him, Justin Herbert, but offensive line seems set, so it should mean a productive offense. And the coaching staff is it's a pretty pretty appealing coaching staff. Uh, and, and, you know, I know in that the background of that staff, Harbaugh, Roman, they like to run the ball a lot, but I, I, they have Justin Herbert. They're going to throw the ball. Uh, they can't afford him. They've cleared a lot. Uh, they have a solid, you know, they, do they, are they rich, completely rich, you know, right now in the future? No, but they have a solid amount. It's a, it's a, they can definitely afford him and they've cleared and they probably will. And like every team will probably clear more going forward. Uh, why it may not happen. They moved on from all those receivers for next to nothing. So it's like you're dev- devaluing the position. And then, you know, then if they turn around and trade, like you'd have to trade pretty good value. Like even if it ends up being a steal, if, so if somebody, let's say someone trades for IU, you know, let's say it ends up being like a lone second round or a second and a later pick like that. It's kind of a steal because you think he's worthy of his talent, talent wise, he's worthy of a first round pick, but that's still value. You know, so if you turn around and, and just cut Mike Williams and, trade Keenan Allen for for a low pick and then trade some value for a receiver it's like uh yeah like we're a little little contradicting but you know this is more of a long term option I mean my argument against that would be this is a long term option so probably definitely worth it um but you know did they do they value the receiver position enough maybe they view 
you know, because Michigan didn't, you know, they ran the ball a lot, and they, you know, Roman Wilson was a really good receiver, but they didn't have this like, they didn't have like an IU. I know it's college football, but they didn't have like an IU level receiver, and they won. You know, the Chiefs had struggles at receivers this year. They won the Super Bowl, so uh, maybe they're just, you know, they won't value like having a star receiver out there. Uh, and they may be focused on their future, even though they could be a win soon or win now team because the quarterback and Harbaugh definitely doesn't want to wait around. Um, so I don't think it's like focused on like a long term future, but maybe they just want to because they do have they do have some holes. Like this team's like pretty solid, but they have they have some holes: interior D line, linebacker, you know, the edge of the future, receivers of the future, running back of the future. Um, you know they they and they could use more guys I guess at corner I suppose but um, I say linebacker so they have some needs so are they in position to do this so but I, I think it's a legit spot like they've cleared space they want they want to receive you know, maybe why they got rid of those receivers they want a guy that can help them now but for the long term future as well boom you got one here again I said it's a massive need so you can't you could afford them now you could afford them now so um I do think it's a legit landing spot I put them at number three there is a clear top two like a 1a 1b or they're both at the top I don't really want to order them but um I think they're far and away the top two and you probably guessed them by now let's talk about the Steelers the team that's been talked about with Brandon Ayuk for the most I'd say for most of the offseason um Ben Link there uh, a lot of talk about it. They have a need at receiver, especially since they moved on from Deontay Johnson for next to nothing. Uh, they want to fill that void, perhaps, or do they think they're set with George Pickens and Roman Wilson? Funny, we were just talking about him a little bit ago. Uh, but, you know, so they could they could be just fine with them. But uh, they definitely could use a receiver there. They want to get better, I, I would imagine. Plenty of future cap space. This team is set up, and I think they they worked it like that. There's some teams that are like, yeah, they have future cap space. It's just kind of how it went because they're kind of rebuilding and it's just how it goes. But for the Steelers, it feels strategical. It feels strategic that they are set up for the future. Like they have future cap space. They're, they're, they don't want to take forever to turn it around, like to get to, they're sick of where they're at. You know, they want to, they, they, they want to win soon. So I think they're set up for a big offseason. This next offseason, I think they're set up pretty big. I think they could appeal to Brandon Ayuk. They could uh, they can trade for him now. He can help them right now. They could sign him long term. So that's for the future. They can use some of that money. They still have a lot left over. And they could have, maybe have a plan. I think similar to the Raiders situation, uh, they could be a Dak Prescott landing spot. Uh, they could have a plan at quarterback. But it may not be appealing because the quarterback situation right now. But they can kind of give him a pitch. Give them a pitch of their future. They are set up for a future here, I believe. A, a, a quick turnaround too, um, you know, starting with next off season. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that that this could be part of that plan. Like th- it's almost like a trade like this right now is almost uh, it's not, but it's almost like a few like a next off season. Like you're using some of that money uh, and, and you're gearing up. It's another step towards really turning around in one off season. So in a way, it's a next off season type move. It's like a f- near future, but not. It helps this year, but type of move if you get what I'm saying here. Um, and a question: Does Arthur Smith's offense value receivers enough? Like it was pretty much Drake London as he's like the receiver in, in Atlanta, and that was it. They ran the ball a lot. They used the tight ends. Uh, obviously, um, you know, and they traded Deontay Johnson for a reason. They have George Pickens, good receiver. I think Roman Wilson's going to be a fine slot receiver. He's going to be solid. So do, are they going to value it enough? That's kind of the question. The two questions are, you know, one is that, I guess another thing is, do they just want to focus on, do they want to, I think their focus is already kind of on the next off season, but do they want to just wait until then to focus on that? And then I guess will the quarter, current quarterback situation scare Ayuk uh, away? So those are the questions, but a lot of things there that say, yes, it could happen. The needs, the money, the, they're getting set up for the, for the, to, to really build this team up for the off season, you know, c- coming this off season and for the near future. So, um, yeah, a, a, a top legit landing spot. And the other one, which is picking up a little bit more steam lately, is the Washington Commanders. But it makes sense, and it's picking up, it's picking up a little more steam because the Jane Daniels thing. There's a video of Brandon Ayuk on the phone with Jane Daniels. So obviously, he's, there's one. He's friends with them. He has his phone number. He's talking to him. He's talking about him. His situation was a little personnel. So that that's boom. That's one. But he did play with them in Jane. Did play with Jane Daniels at Arizona State. 
crazy that 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 is the thing because Brandon Ayuk's been in the league and Jane Daniels just got drafted and hasn't played a snap in the NFL yet, but there is a connection there. So you think that alone has to appeal to Ayuk? Like, and it's I know they're not like the best team right now, but it's an explosive, fun, young team. Uh, they bring in Kingsbury, which is high power passing attack. Like it's explosive. I, I think Ayuk will like that th- those types of plays, that playbook. So it's going to be a pretty appealing team in a different way than, um, you know, the, the the more of the contenders that we talked about in a different way. But they should uh, they should appeal to him just as much. So that connection is there, and and it's kind of what's sparking the Jaden Daniels thing. Kind of what's sparking these trade rumors again because he's like, yeah, the Niners don't want me. Maybe he's trying to get draw them in in a little bit more. They're not offering nearly enough or whatever the situation is. Adam Peters is the new GM of the Washington Commanders, and he was on the staff with the 49ers. So he is very familiar with Brandon Ayuk. He knows he is good, obviously. They know each other, so there's a connection there, a connection with Jaden Daniels, connection there. Um, and you you may say, and that's kind of the, the uh, kind of fast forward here to – why they wouldn't, maybe they, why they may not do it. They aren't really desperate for a receiver. On paper, they look pretty good. They have a star receiver in Terry McLaurin. Um, and they, you know, another reason they may just focus on future, like, hey, we're going to, we're building this thing up. We're not trying to go right now. But I think Ayuk, the argument against that, I think Ayuk could be part of the future. And the argument against the, yeah, they're not, they don't really need a receiver. They're not really desperate for a receiver. They have McLaurin, um, who's a star receiver, really good. They have Dotson, who could be really good with Jaden Daniels. Um, they drafted McCaffrey. Obviously, they liked him when they drafted him. Uh, but my argument against that is long-term receiver option. They kind of need a, like insurance, like safety option there because McLaurin has this year and next year. Um, you know, Dotson, uh, you know, long-term question mark there. So then it kind of – there's not a lot there for, for you know, for, for in terms of uh, – long-term option for a receiver. So you get him, you get better, you help your rookie quarterback uh, progress, get better. You have kind of a connection. You become a better team. You're more explosive. And you have this big time receiver that is a long-term big time option. So that they're negative. Like the, the reason their negatives or in other words, their, their reasons why they won't do it. You kind of really could argue against them. Like I just did. So that's why, um, not, that's not, that's not why, but that's another reason why they are a top top landing spot but they're being talked about a bit more for for all the reasons we explained there so interesting i think the big i actually think the big thing there is adam peters i think uh, we've seen that a lot like connections with coaches or guys in the front office you know we've seen it in trades we see it every single year people like forget they forget we see it with trades we see it with free agency signing the guys they know that they they know they're good they know they can play in that scheme that system they they know they're the right type of guy to be in that building, um, you know. And uh, if I, I, I'd say if Peters had no interest in trading for Brandon Ayuk, then that's interesting. That's like something like that. Maybe he doesn't want like you know because he is a little bit of a distraction right now. So maybe he views he's that type of guy. But I, I don't know about that because I, I think if he if they traded for him, that would mean he would want to be there, and he's probably signing. I think the extension has to be agreed upon when trading. It's one of those situations. So. It means you signed the extension, so and there's no you know no, no worries. So I, I think they would understand that it's he's there. He's like there's no issues. So, but we will see. Uh, again, I put I put the commanders and the sewers at the very top. Uh, commanders, a lot of positives, very limited negatives there with them. Chargers make a lot of sense. It's just are they going to value it like that? You know, but, and then there's some other teams. He's been linked to the Raiders. We talked about it, but ruled some teams out here as well. Let me know your guys thoughts in the comments. If you want to rank your landing spots, whatever, if you want to have some trade scenarios, what is he going to go for at this point? You know, players get traded for less than their value. So does he go for a second plus? I'd be a pretty good deal for the acquiring team, but we will see. We've been doing team by team previews. A lot of fun. Check those out. Playlist on the channel. More to come. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.